I'm your math professor, and that means that I spent more than half of my life dedicated to learning mathematics. But more recently, I've started learning the game of chess. I'm not particularly good just yet, but I'm really having a lot of fun. And one of the things I've observed is that the kinds of skills and learning strategies to effectively learn math also carry over to effectively learning chess. There are some differences, but there really are a lot of similarities. And so in this video, I want to just talk about that. I want to talk about the different learning strategies that I've observed are good and effective for both math and chess. Now, the first point I want to talk about is mastering the small details. Whether it's math or chess, both of these disciplines really have a large number of relatively small details that it's important that you deeply understand and have completely mastered. There are indeed many themes and patterns and larger skills that need to be developed beyond just mastering the small details, but the broader understanding is often built out of mastering the small details and it sort of necessitates understanding those small details. For example, with chess, one of the basic mating patterns is rook and king versus king. This isn't a particularly crazy chess detail, but it's an important one, not just for a rook and king versus king endgame, but if there's some other situation that appears where the same basic pattern can apply. And really understanding and mastering that idea just allows you to solve that little portion of chess. In contrast, in mathematics, it's very important when you're proving anything that if you have an implication, if P then Q, you know the difference between contrapositive, which is not Q implies not P, and converse, which is Q implies P. They're different things, but students confuse these all the time. And so I would encourage you in either discipline not to shy away from this. If there's some small detail, maybe you see it, it goes by, and you're like, I sort of half got that, some game you play, and you sort of got the idea. No, pause, make sure you fully understand the detail, and then continue on with your life. The second thing I've observed is that whether it's chess or math or many other things, there's a ratio between getting your hands dirty and actually practicing yourself and learning from experts. So for example, in chess, it's pretty obvious if you want to master chess, you actually have to sit down and play a lot of chess games. But that's not the only thing that you can or should do. For example, you can learn through experts by reading books about chess or something that I've been doing a lot, which is watching YouTube videos on chess. For example, I'm a really big fan of Naroditsky's speed run, and I feel like I've learned a lot of different details and important ideas from chess, from an expert in chess. In math, the sort of emphasis is almost the other way around, as in we're often exposed to a lot of expert advice in mathematics. You have to sit in a math class for 40 hours in a semester. Or you might watch on YouTube videos like my own channel or read books. All these things are possible where you're learning from experts. But I think the key lesson that comes to math from chess is how important actually getting your hands dirty and doing the practicing, which for math would be solving lots of problems, is going to be. For chess, it would be playing lots of games. This component of it where you are actually working yourself and developing skills, say all those small details I just said you should master, it's incredibly important for you to put in the work doing the practice. But the balance can also go the other way, and people in chess often run into this, where they love playing, and I know they do this myself, they love playing, they play a ton of games, but they don't expose themselves to the expert as much, not watching videos, not reading books, not doing that kind of analysis. And, and often this can be really inefficient, where you're missing out on many important ideas, and so you really want a balance between these things, a balance of learning from experts as well as practicing yourself. So make sure whatever you're doing, you've got a good balance between those. The next point is about review. And again, this is something that I think people learning math can learn a little something from people who are learning chess. Because suppose you play a chess game. Well, afterwards, you can go back through that game and try to see well, what could you have done differently? How could you have improved? And you can even turn on the computer which will tell you where your inconsistencies, mistakes, and even blunders are going to be. This allows you to identify the kinds of errors you're making, the big themes, and then actively improve on them in future games. But the same is true in mathematics. If you're taking any math course, you're going to get feedback on your homeworks, on your tests, on your exams. And a lot of students, they just get the mark back and they throw their paper in the pile. But I really think that you should be focusing incredibly intently on the kind of mistakes that you did. Like, what could you have improved from the assessments that you actually did and what are you going to do to improve in the future so you don't make those same type of mistakes? Something that a lot of people struggle with, and myself very much included, 
is the idea of persistence. This actually happens at two different timescales. So firstly, imagine the type of persistence needed for the specific computation that you're doing, the specific calculation, for example, of a chess line, where you're trying to move out into the future to visualize the board and try to evaluate whether this particular chess line is effective or not effective. A lot of mastery of chess is about improving your ability to do calculations and to sort of be able to see into the future in your mind's eye and, and be able to evaluate what happens. That kind of calculation skill is incredibly important, but it's easy to be intellectually lazy about it, especially when you're under time pressure, for example, in like a blitz format in a chess game. And so I think it's really, really important that we actively make sure we're not being intellectually lazy. We're not skipping that deep, hard, thinking it through calculation at a key moment when we really ought to think deeply. And in chess, so many people improve in many other ways, like they learn their opening theory and they memorize their mating patterns, but it's that willingness to really go in and calculate that ends up holding them back. This is the same in math. Okay, maybe there's not always the time pressure, although there could be if it was for a test, but I've really noticed with a lot of my calculus students that persistence through a computation that starts to get a little long and messy and gnarly and needs a little bit of new ideas, that being able to keep on persisting at that calculation so you can go through it and then finally see the larger picture is incredibly important. But we always resist this. It's so easy to be intellectually lazy and try to avoid the taxing mental effort of a longer calculation. So I just encourage you to lean into those calculations because the more you do it, the better you get. And persistence also occurs at longer timescales than just the specific calculation you're doing. Sometimes if you're trying to learn chess or math for months on end, and it feels like you're not improving, you're still really struggling, it's easy to start to go into behaviors that are less effective for your learning. But having the motivation and the sort of willpower to keep on persisting at what you know are effective strategies to improve will pay off in the long run. And so persistence is just really important at all different timescales. Let's talk about the relationship between memorization and understanding. Because a lot of students, I think, really focus either way too much on memorization or way too little on memorization. For example, in mathematics, some students will try to get by in a course by just memorizing a huge number of facts without really understanding what's going on. This actually makes it harder to memorize things when you don't understand, but more importantly, you lose the understanding that gives you the flexibility to really improve. And the same is true in chess. Some people, I think, focus too much on memorization and opening theory, the sequences of moves that you do at the beginning is definitely an example of this. Myself, for instance, one line that I like to play is the accelerated dragon. It's just some sequence of moves that I've memorized it goes a little bit like this. And that's great that I know this line and some other lines, but it's important that I really understand why are all the moves in this line doing what they're doing? Like, what am I trying to accomplish? Because that's what's going to give me the flexibility to adapt when my opponent does something that I haven't memorized, which of course is going to come up all the time. And so it's important that whenever you do memorization, understanding goes with it. But then on the flip side, some people don't memorize stuff enough. And I think it's because memorization isn't really sexy. It's just, I mean, it's this thing you can go and do, you can put in effort, but that's not like the grand, beautiful parts of mathematics that you're really enjoying and you're in this flow state. No, you're, you're just memorizing things. And so I think that sometimes people think of memorization as less important than it really is. I mean, heck, you could always just look something up and math say. Now, that's true, but deep understanding and fluency within concepts is often built up out of memorization of a lot of sort of smaller details. And so if you try to shy away from that memorization, it actually will take you away from the ability to really develop your skill in basically any subject. And the idea that, yes, you could just look something up when you need it, is only true if you know to look it up and you think to look it up and all sorts of ideas like this. The, the building of long-term understanding comes from a strong memory. And so memorization is sometimes both over and under emphasized, but whatever you do, do it with understanding. One thing you can do in chess that actually helps your memorization is to solve tactics or sometimes called solving puzzles. And this is really because memorization is more than just being able to state a particular fact. It's about pattern recognitions, about 
recognizing when and why does a certain chess idea occur. And you really want to sort of space out your retrieval of these ideas from your mind to be able to improve your pattern recognition. So in chess, one of the great things you can do is you can just practice doing these kind of tactical ideas until you memorize them. But more than that, memorize them and start to build some recognition of when you should be applying them. For, for example, one of the simplest chess tactics is the idea of a back rank mate. And that's great. Most people who play chess know how to do that. But by playing a ton of puzzles, you get that pattern recognition. So it's like almost impossible for you to miss a back right mate because you've seen it so many times in your puzzles. Or in mathematics, take for example, the small angle approximation that sine of x is approximately x for small values of x, a, a very useful fact. Even if you have this fact memorized, like if someone asks you it, you can say, oh yes, I do recollect that fact. Again, it's that pattern recognition of being able to know when it would be a good idea to use it and to bring it out of your memory that's important. So just, you gotta keep on doing problems so that this kind of pattern recognition develops. The final point that I wanna make, and I think this is an important one, is that for both math and chess, there's a little bit of a cultural view, a little bit of a societal view that these disciplines are for like really, really smart people. And I just don't think that's true. Uh, indeed, I, I really enjoyed watching the Queen's Gambit that came out recently, but even in that, the, the lot of emphasis on how the protagonist is just way smarter at chess than the types of opponents that she's gonna be facing. However, I just really believe in a growth mindset that encourages everybody to be able to improve in these disciplines. I know that I'm not going to be the world chess champion. I know that I'm not going to win the Fields Medal in Mathematics. But I think that I can, and just like any of you, develop, learn, grow, enjoy, appreciate both mathematics and chess. And indeed, for all the students I've ever had in mathematics who've told me I'm bad at mathematics, I just haven't believed any of them because I think that all of those people are capable of learning developing in the same way. And the same is exactly true for chess. I think you can enjoy and improve and get better at chess, and I would encourage you to do so. All right, so that's enough for me. I hope you enjoyed this random video about chess on my math channel. If you did, please do give it a like for the YouTube algorithm. If you have any thoughts about this or learning tips that you think are effective, leave them down in the comments below, and we'll do some more math next time in the next video.